All right, guys, let's talk a little more about Dutchies. Let's talk about Dutch Shepherds. I know a lot of people were upset about that video I did talking about how I think they are probably the worst, if not one of the worst dogs that a family could own. Um, and that hurt a lot of feelings. That got a lot of people upset. A lot of accusations thrown my direction. You know, some people think that Mace, the Dutchie that you guys have been seeing in some of my videos lately, was you know, me suddenly turning over a new leaf and all of a sudden I'm gonna have a duchy and change my mind. Guys, what you don't understand is when I made that video, I'd already had a number of duchies, right? And I came to that conclusion after having a number of duchies and training many duchies, right? It's, it's not a, uh, sadly, it's not a super uncommon breed for us to train. We get a lot of them here for training. The issue isn't whether they can be good for work. Obviously there's duchies that can be fantastic working dogs. The issue, that what I was saying in that video is, that is the average person shouldn't own one. The average person shouldn't buy one of these dogs and assume it's going to go well. And the average family, you know, shouldn't buy one of these dogs and assume it's going to go anything but poorly, right? I say, I didn't make that video just because I have this strange animus towards Dutch Shepherds. I actually have a lot of experience with Dutch Shepherds, which is why I say that. And not just experience like, oh, I've seen a few. Experience as in, I've actually spent significant amounts of time training them and uh, putting life and limb on the line, doing uh, various things with them. So I'm quite familiar with them um, from a training standpoint. You know, so I, did I purchase Mace in Holland when I was there? Do I think he's a fantastic Dutch Shepherd? Absolutely. He's an awesome dog. He's super, super cool. But, you know, he's not a dog that I can sell to most people. Even people that think they know what they're doing, <laughs> you know, with this dog, you know, it probably wouldn't go super well for them. Um, you know, I have to be very careful about who this dog goes to. There, there's been many, many people that have, you know, there's a little tough there. There's been many people that have offered me good money for the dog and I've said no because I know that, you know, he's, he's important to me, this dog, and I really want him to thrive. And I wouldn't, you know, set them or him up for failure. So he's a super cool dog and, um, you know, he's, he's really... Uh, quite a showpiece just because how big and, and, and intense he is but you know not for the average person and listen the average Dutch Shepherd especially available here in North America isn't as well bred as Mace and even if you're off in Holland and you you buy one of these let's say in the homeland of the Dutchie you know most people especially these days aren't equipped to train these types of dogs they don't know how right and and to be quite frank if you're in western europe the type of training these dogs need is generally illegal <laughs> so so you know i stand by my video i said you know if you're a working dog connoisseur or you're someone who's looking for a working dog for that specific purpose then i think it'll be good for you you know for sure if you get the right dog you know now don't get me wrong, you know, if you're into working dogs, if you want a, a working canine and, and you're picking the right dog, I think it's a, a fantastic dog. Dutchies are obviously, you know, there's some real super awesome dogs out there that are Dutch Shepherds. That's not the point of the video. The point of the video is, do they make good family dogs? And in general, we don't, uh, we're not of course gonna speak about exceptions to the rule. In general, no, even the really good ones like Mace. Like if he was just living in a family home, I can't imagine how that would go. <laughs> You know, this is a dog, man. He needs he, he needs an outlet. He needs to do things. Like, he needs a certain kind of training in order for him to be successful. He's a really cool dog. Again, don't get me wrong. I actually really, really like this dog. But there's nothing that I said in that video that I regret. <laughs> even the good ones, they're, they're not... Even if you're like a working dog person, okay? And you're kind of into working dogs and it's a bit of a hobby for you. This is still... Dutchies don't make generally for even those types of people the best dog, right? Because they're not super user friendly, right? Like they take a special touch. You kind of really got to know what you're doing in the training of them. Now, can you buy a really nice trained Dutchie that's, you know, super stable and easygoing? Sure you can. Are they common? No. <laughs> you know, everyone's like, ah, oh, no, no, no. And you don't know, I still, to this day, I get, there's no, Mace, come here, buddy. There's no dog that I see almost more commonly with issues than, than Dutchies and, and, and to a lesser degree Malwa. I think for whatever reason, the Dutch dogs, and I'm not just talking about the stripey dogs, I'm talking about the Dutch herders, okay? Because they can come in tan too, I know, right? These dogs are dogs that tend to have a lot of handler issues. And then the FCI registered Dutch Shepherds, right? These are the dogs that are, you know, purebred FCI dogs. These dogs often tend to be... Um, 
you know, soft and nervous, you know? So it's, it's not that it's better when you breed them weaker. It's just that you get the nerves without, you know, any kind of, come on, Mace, get out of the horseman. Hey, get out of there. Dirty dog. <laughs> I'll tell you what I like about Dutch Shepherds. You know, they're super intense dogs. I mean, the look, it's such a cool look. You know, the tiger stripes with the super dark pigmentation, they come brighter too, so you can get them a little bit more orange. Um, I like their intensity, and I like that they're not, you know, they don't tend to be as sensitive as Malinois, right? They have a, a lot of the traits of the Malinois, but they're not quite the same as, as like an FCI Malinois. Uh, and I've handled quite a few and trained quite a few FCI Malinois. There, there's a little more hardness to them. There's a little more independence to them. But, you know, they, they, the good ones, you know, will have no trouble if you're making a mistake, kind of checking you as a handler and saying, hey, bro, don't do that. <laughs> and they, they can all say it in different ways. You know, they can they can say it in a, in a way that you might not like or that might lead you to have a few more holes in you than from when you first started. But, you know, they're certainly, the good ones are certainly very respectable dogs. So, you know, I just wanted a little more, talk a little more about the, the Dachi and talk about, you know, my personal experience with them. Um, you know, again, they're not... Uh, I've seen a few lately, like I know that they're doing some different kind of breedings, especially like I said already, I alluded to, you know, the new laws in Europe, it's forcing them to kind of, I think, change in some ways how they breed these dogs, because if they're breeding them like, you know, those gangster duchies of the past, you know, you basically have to be a criminal in order to train one properly in those countries. Um, but uh, I think that they are making them a little bit more, you know, uh, let's say sporty in their behavior, a little more biddable, a little more, you know, prey, breeding away from some of the, you know, handler aggression and stuff like that, um, that was common in the lines, maybe, or in some lines, I should say. I like, I like a good duchy, but they are certainly not for a novice. And I'll stand by that. Now, I'll tell you this much. If I had started with this dog as a puppy, you know, if I'd had him as a puppy, do I think... And, you know, by the time he was a year old, he could have been the, the type of dog that would do well in the average family home, having received all the appropriate training, so on and so forth, as he was growing up, having that imprinted into him in a very deep way. Yeah, I think so. I think there'd be certainly, a, I would certainly be a lot, maybe less, what's the word, um, less choosy about where he ended up because there would be more situations in which he could do better because, you know, like I said, he's actually fundamentally a stable dog, especially for a duchy. It's just, um, it's just, you know, obviously we're, we're talking a three-year-old male dog in his prime who's, you know, full of himself and, and uh, you know, intense, even if he is, does have a fundamentally good nature. I just got to be careful where he ends up because I don't want anybody, you know, obviously I don't want him to, to have a problem or I don't want anybody else to have a problem. But if I had raised this dog from a puppy, do I think he could have ended up, you know, do I think I could have put him in more places? Yes, I do. I actually do think that. But that's me as a professional trainer. Mace, come on, buddy. That's me as a professional trainer raising the dog. And 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 bringing the dog up and, and putting all the, recognizing the little issues. Let me see where he's at here. Yeah. Recognizing all the little issues, you know, as he's growing up, there's moments like I sold a couple of um, Malinois X's recently, and they were from my breeding program, and I, I had these dogs from, from early on. And you know, there were moments in their upbringing where I said, well, thank goodness he wasn't with the average family. You know, now these dogs can live, you know, they, they do live with families. They live with what I would consider to be novice handlers, and they do very, very well, but that's because of the imprinting that went on for an entire year. Whereas your average German Shepherd is a very different proposition, no matter how strong it is. Your average German Shepherd tends to be a lot more, um, let's say, forgiving to handle. And there's no two ways around that. You know, there's, there's certainly a reason why there's a lot of police departments that prefer German Shepherds and won't even take Malinois and Dutchies because they've just had so many issues with, with handling those dogs. Those, these types of dogs take a certain kind of touch. But... Um, you know, I think one of these dogs, like, like a dog like Mace, raised properly from puppy by someone who really knows what they're doing, could turn out, you know, by the time he's a year, year and a half, to be the dog that most people would have no problem being around. Because there is no 
fundamental genetic flaws with the dog. Look, by all means, if you're someone that knows what you're doing and you want to get a Dutch Shepherd and you want to raise that dog as a puppy um, and, and turn that dog into something, you know, super cool, super useful, super functional, you want to have one of these really cool dogs, you know, that looks like something out of a movie, I think, you know, if you pick the right dog that has the right lines, and again, I don't really see very many people in North America breeding these dogs, to be honest with you. There's a lot of Dutchies being bred, but most of them you couldn't pay me to keep, right? But if you go and you find a good breeding and you end up with one of these dogs, um, you know, if you know what you're doing, by all means, you, you can certainly raise that dog to be something, you know, that's 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 really cool to, to live with and that's really cool to, to, to do things with. But again, the average family that ends up with one of these dogs, they bought the dog because they saw it and they said, God damn, that dog looks cool. But at the end of the day, that is not a dog that they should own. And that is a dog that has, like I said, they're not user friendly. They are dogs that you really need to know what you're doing as a handler. If you make a mistake, especially at certain pivotal moments as the dog is developing, um, or pivotal moments as you're training with the dog, there are some mistakes that if you make them, they will haunt you for the entire life of the dog. That's where the handler aggression comes from. That's where a lot of the resource guarding comes from. Of course, there's genetic predisposition for these behaviors, but they do also come from those moments. There's Puppies will experiment with behaviors, you know? So, for instance, at some point your puppy might say, you know, there's a moment where he might have food and you go okay buddy let's go or you you go to grab him or something like that and he shows you all his teeth and he snarls at you that is a pivotal moment in the dog's development right what do you do there what is your plan do you have a plan do you do the right thing or do the wrong thing do you make it better do you make it worse there'll be a moment when you grab his collar I'm, and again i'm talking about i'm not talking about your golden retriever or your you know your your your, your nervous german shepherd i'm talking about like a strong dog you know, a dog like Mace here. There'll be a moment about something, whether it's a sit, whether you grab his collar, whether you want to do it, cut his nails, something. And he's going to say, hey, man, hell no, I don't want to do that. And you're not going to make me do that. And you better have a plan for that. And you better make sure he learns the right lessons there. Because if he doesn't, Macy, if he doesn't, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Mace, come on. Come on. Good. Come next to me for a little bit here. Oh, good boy. Good. Come on, Mace. Stop the pee. He likes to pee on everything, this dog. He's one of those. Mr. Mr. Mark his territory. But look, man, I actually really like this dog. <laughs> Some people have offered, made me offers, and, and, and they've actually been like handlers that I thought, eh, you know, you'd be pretty good. But I've said no simply because you know he's a cool dog man i really like handling him i like i like hanging out with him i think he's 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 one of them ones you know he's a real one and i really enjoy spending time with dogs like this nice talking to you about mace we'll see how many more videos he ends up in like i said i've i've, I've had a lot of people interested in him so we might find the right situation for him and he might um you know end up going and finding somewhere else to live um which i'll actually be sad to see him go i'll really be quite sad because i really do like him um, but at the end of the day, it's not really about me. It's about the dog and if the right situation arises and as we've talked about there there You know, there's more that are wrong situations that are right situations for a dog like this if The right situation arises the right handler shows uh, arises for this dog and that's where he's gonna end up so um, You know, but until then we get to enjoy him here. I get to play with him I get to you know take him for walks so on and so forth and um, I've really been enjoying it. I've been enjoying playing with this Dutch Shepherd.